Okay guys, so you're watching this video because you want to do a brushless Power Wheels RC conversion, right? Well, if you're watching this video, I'm going to go through the current build. We have a miniature fireball build that we got going on and we are installing some Castle Creations Mamba, Mamba Monster 2 in it right now. And then in Dung Beetle, we have some Mamba Monster X. Um, very similar ESCs, but the X has censored wires because I think we might have issues with cogging um, off the line, so we'll see. So I'm just gonna get right into it, guys. So if if you're looking to do something beyond a standard wheelie, uh, very basic RC system, this isn't cheap. Um, I'll put links to the to all of the parts that we use for this build in the description. You guys can click on those and put the build um, list together for yourselves and see what you got going on. So obviously what we need is motors and ESCs and you will need two guys. You can't run a brushless motor, two of them off of one ESC. They both need independent. So as you can see, two controllers, Two controllers, right? Two motors. And then we couldn't find these, so we had to well, um, solder up a couple. Um, they're male, two male XT90s into a one female XT90 to get to the battery. And we're only running this as a demonstration on a 4S. So you guys pick out your ESCs and motors that you're going to use, I would highly recommend get something that's powerful for high amp draw, otherwise you're just going to fry them. So out of the ESCs, you have to have a Y splitter. And it is very important, guys, you notice that there's this little piece of wire right here? Well, you have to cut power going to the receiver because you can't power them both from one. So you just need the five volts go into it from the one ESC. From the splitter, we have a three foot long servo extension going into the radio because uh, that is at the back of the car. You have to have the brushless motors by the ESCs, which makes sense, right? You just want them short, sweet. And then it runs through the body. And then for all of the steering stuff, which we highly recommend, linear actuators for steering. So what we've got here to do the front, because that, that's all pretty basic, guys. You got a radio and your ESC picture, an RC car. So that's it right there. The steering's the tricky part that gets a lot of people stumped. Um, we just did the video today on this build, putting the steering in, but this is gonna be the follow-up in more detail. So, Something to note, guys, I have people call me, or message me, that is. They've used these cheapies. They try to cheap out. It's just got a negative and a positive. You can't use that, guys. It actually has to have two sets of wires, and one of them has three wires for your potentiometer, and then the other lead coming out has your negative and positive for the motor that's in here. So... To make steering work, you have to have the actuator with feedback, that's what it's called, and a lack board, linear actuator control board. It's like 40 bucks for that. So because we're using this on 6S, we can't just tap into the battery to supply power to the linear actuator. So what we have just on the bench here is a 12 volt, uh, 10 amp hour, I think it is. So we've got the negative and positive and we have the negative going right to the lack board, but on the positive, we have it going into an RC relay. And we actually have that on a switch right here. So we can turn steering off and on. So what that does is it's basically like a light switch. Power's going in, but until you activate it, then power goes out. Otherwise, your battery would drain because you would constantly be powering up your lack board. So, um, once you fire up the radio, you hit your switch, turn your steering on, um, you have power coming into the board right here, and then out of it, we have a little 9-inch servo extension, so that is a female to a male, 
And it is very important also, guys, you do the same thing. We're not powering this lack board up from the receiver. So you have to cut out a small section of the red power lead. It even says it in the instructions. Do not connect red wire. There's the instructions, guys. So it's getting power from an alternate source. And then the feedback, it, there's basically a wiper in here that senses where your steering is. I tried to show you that one, but that one's not fired up. So that center, you're turning one way, you let off the, the throttle or the steering, and it self-centers. Now why is that important? Just like an RC car, when you let off, you want it to track straight, right? Well, if you guys, I see a lot of people recommend this. This is one of those cheapy $70 wheelie systems. Uh, I've got it powered on. We're gonna power up the remote. And here's your steering. This is what you got. See how it just stays where it is? So you're constantly fighting it, trying to go where you wanna go. But if you guys are on a budget, and you don't mind really, that's power lock, really slow, this will get you by, but it is, in my opinion, um, a very basic budget-friendly operation. And then in, in the middle, you guys could do something like these right here. Uh, these are brushed controllers. But I'm not going to touch on this because this is about the high-end brushless, but this isn't cheap, guys. I'm not going to give a price because everybody has a different um, budget in mind. But you need also a radio system. And for this, we, for actually the Fireball, we are using this RC6. Um, and we're actually controlling the servo relay by that switch right there. And on this Fly Sky Noble, we're controlling it at that switch. But um, there was those very key points, guys. It's cutting power from one ESC and the power coming from your receiver. Other than that, it's pretty basic. The hardest part is going to be how to mount your linear actuator. So basically, this is a push rod. And you have your tie rod that connects the two steering spindles you want it to be in straight line and the basic easiest system is to drill into the front of the uh, spindle if you guys doesn't have this two-sided you might have to bolt on a rod that makes it like a spindle arm like on a go-kart and you mount your, your rod to one end and then the other end becomes permanently fixed but it needs to be able to pivot um, on your chassis of the car this model it was basic, we just took a piece of flat rod, bolted it, and then we welded a nut, and then it mounted here, but it's still allowed to pivot because when you're steering, you don't want it to bind. And then here's another example. This was on a C7 Corvette. We had to get a little bit more intricate on the mount. So that mounts underneath the foot pedal, and this connected to the steering rod. Um, it's not super hard, but it's gonna take you a couple days to figure out all this stuff. I highly recommend you mount your, your motors and gearboxes to the gearboxes, I should say. Um, figure out where that's gonna go and then just connect the wires up and then you want the battery close to the steering actuator, just like what we're doing. Um, it's up on top under the hood. That's where we're gonna have a uh, we're using the Life PO4, super lightweight, 13.2 uh, volts full charge. Um, what you can do is run a lithium polymer battery or lipo and put a little bit more amps, I'm sorry, voltage to it. I think these will handle, the board will handle up to 24 volts. So you could really make this thing faster. So right now we're just doing what we have in the shop, but if the steering's not fast enough, the response for you, um, you can put more volts to it, but it's got to be separated from, you know, your your receiver. So just follow the instructions that you can download online. This tells you everything right here. Power coming in, RC going out, and power going 
out to your actuator. So I'll put links in the description to all of these products and you guys can make yourself a rad brushless power wheels conversion. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.